you really have no depth as you feel this team tonight. Well, one of the things we said all along, that we were going to build this team through the draft. And we were going to be patient, and we knew it couldn't be done overnight. I don't think we can lose sight of the fact that we inherited an awful lot of problems. And we're not going to go ahead with plan B and do a lot of things. We're going to build it through the draft. And we've, we've looked at the first half. As far as the Jets are concerned, here's the good news. Well, the, you know, the points off the turnovers is uh, obviously encouraging. They haven't had a lot of that this year. They make a field goal. Brownie Nagel has an okay first half. You know, 65 yards rushing. They wanted to run the ball, but the good news really doesn't make up for the bad news. And I mean, the bad news, well, there's a bunch of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there could be more than this, quite honestly, but... Um, I mean, that, that's it, folks. Uh, that, that's, that kind of exemplifies what has happened to the New England Patriots this year. We said at the very beginning of this broadcast is the team that kind of corrected those mistakes would win, and if both teams did, we'd have a competitive game. But the, the, clearly, the Patriots have not corrected their mistakes. Now, what does Dick McPherson have to say at halftime? One thing, play with some confidence. It's obvious there's no confidence right now this New England team. As Aguiar will kick off, Vaughn and Stanley are back deep. It'll be John Vaughn. And Vaughn will bring it up. Getting good field position to the 29-yard line. So Millen, who suffered six sacks in the first half, comes onto the field. Gary, I don't think a coach can just say go out and play with confidence. I mean, I, I don't think that's how you get confidence back. You, I don't think you can talk about it. I think players just have to do it. And what this Patriot team needs uh, it's some leadership, and it has to come from you, Miller, who's a quarterback. Defensively, it has to come from Andre Tippett and guys like that. If they have any chance of getting this season turned around at all, they need some guys to stand up and make it happen. So, yeah, the second youngest team in the league behind Tampa Bay. Here is Russell, who did have a closed-door meeting for the team this year, and he's knocked out of bounds as he comes to 31. He was trying as a second-year player to fire the troops up. And uh, that shows you, when you got a guy that's only been in the league two years, it is hard to find a leader. Yeah, and when you don't have the experienced quarterback, I mean, you, Millen, has been around for five years, but he hasn't done it yet, so it's tough for him to be a leader. And you, if you look at the other AFC East teams, I mean, you you have, uh, you know, Marino down in Miami, who's obviously a leader. Kelly up in, up in Buffalo. Jeff George is kind of developing that with the Colts because he's such a, a good player. But these teams really don't have that. Second down now and eight. Millen searching the field, finds John Stevens over the middle, and Stevens has it out to the 36. It'll still be three yards short of the first down. Well, here is the bonanza of 83. Look at the quarterbacks that came out of that draft. O'Brien is the only one not to play in the Super Bowl. You know what's interesting about that, Pat? None of them have won a Super Bowl. Well, you see John Elway, who was the number one pick in that draft, only one quarterback who was ever drafted as the number one pick in the entire draft, not just the first, first rounder, has ever won a Super Bowl. And that's Terry Bradshaw. Third down, two. Russell trying to get in, and Lonnie Young comes up from his safety spot and wrestles him down, and it's fourth down coming up. That's what they talked about. Young is going to have to create some things, and he did there. We talked about the different types of things Lonnie Young had to do. He's the free safety, so he's got to save the home run first. But then on, sh on, on run downs, you see number 31 coming from the right side, just unblocked. And you don't have enough blockers with five offensive linemen to pick up the free safety on the blitz. Not only was it a good call, it was perfectly timed by Lonnie Young. Six years he played with the Cardinals, coming over in a draft pick trade ninth round i believe yep number nine is now mccarthy punting away wobbly punt didn't hit that one very well carpenter gauges it gives ground and will be tackled inside the 25. ended up being a pretty effective punt wasn't very pretty and they'll take it inside the 25 yard line let's look now at the east standings in the AFC. Miami's just really now the team to beat. They went into Rich Stadium and defeated the Bills today. Well, you know, I think it's an interesting division, quite honestly. Indianapolis clearly is moving in the right direction. What, and, and maybe New England and the Jets take a page for them. You get the quarterback situation solved, which they did with Jeff George. You build the defense, which the Colts did through this year's draft, and then you have a chance to compete the next couple of years. So Nagel will start this drive from the 25. Gives to Blair Thomas running away from Tippett. Oh, and a big hit. You can hear it clear up here in the booth as he goes down at the 29. 
Johnny Rembert, who played in the Super Bowl in 86 for the Patriots, one of three players still remaining on that team, made the stop. It will be a second down, and Thomas is shaky after uh, I don't that blame impact. Him. Yeah, you, you could hear that one and all the way up here. I mean, the, the, the position of running back in the National Football League, the game is violent enough as it is, but for a running back, I don't think there's any more violent position because it's kind of collision you get because generally when you carry the ball in the National Football League, Gary, I found out it attracts a crowd. Does it? Oh, yeah. Where did you find that out? Well, I just uh, put on my thinking cap last night. That research is always helpful. And it's <laughs> second down and six, a gain of four. Thomas out of the game. Freeman McNeil is in. And he'll get the football. He squirts it out to the 33-yard line. It's Rembert again making the stop. Rembert is playing very hard. That's what Dick McPherson said. He says he's throwing his body around, doing as well as he can. 31-year-old veteran linebacker. Well, Tim Go, the nose tackle, number 72, is really playing pretty well in spite of it all, too. You see Rembert, number 52, but 72 is the nose tackle, Tim Goad. And he's a guy that, again, there's no quit in this guy. I mean, nose tackles don't pay attention to scores. They really don't. Nose tackles just kind of keep on playing, regardless of who's in front of them. Third down and two yards to go. McNeil stays in, and he's in the backfield. Nago them all that height could have been an advantage there coverage on the near sideline by david Poole, and that'll bring up a fourth down yeah, rob moore knows if that ball is thrown to his inside shoulder he makes the catch even if it's thrown behind him you see the ball is thrown to the backside. side yeah, still may be catchable but with these with these receivers i i think the jets will oftentimes under throw the deep ball and they either get the pass interference or they'll go up uh, in the air and, catch, and make the catch. Aguiar to punt inside the 20. Stanley is back. Hits it off the side of his foot. Wobbly kick. But it does take a Jets bounce. It's going to go inside 25. In the last minute, Stanley picks it up and gets it out to the 29. Last second effort that time by Stanley. A three-yard return. A 43-yard punt. 17-0. The Jets. Do you ever feel that your present car or truck is being worked on more often than you're able to drive it? That you're so busy spending your time and money fixing your vehicle rather than doing the things you'd really enjoy? Well, it's not time to ride off into the sunset just yet, but it is time to call Larry Elkin at Dick Gidron Leasing. With offices and service departments in Mayapak and the Bronx, Dick Gidron will lease or finance any make or model of car or truck there is. Jensen goes in motion, middle of the play action, stepping up, and the catch is made by Irving Fryer out to the 49. That'll be a first down. Earlier in the game, he caught a 39-yard pass, one of the few moments they've had, and that's a 19-yard game. You know, the, the psychology of a big play for the Patriots right now, this, is, this isn't a huge play, but in their season right now, believe me, this is a big play. And it's not just yardage you're talking about with the Patriots right now. It's a feeling that you can do something. You're not inept. And I think that's the kind of feeling this team needs to get more of. Vaughn and Turner in the backfield. Play action by Millen. Pressure coming from Marvin Washington. He just dumps it off to Vaughn, and Vaughn took a shot from Kyle Clifton. And Vaughn didn't like that at all, and he's telling Clifton about it. Again, Millen had very little time. Marvin Washington putting some heat on from the near side. Well, Marvin Washington, it really has been in U Millen's face most of this game. He comes to the outside, forces him up. Now, Millen just kind of avoiding the sack at the heads-up play. Unfortunately, it comes at the expense of John Vaughn, who takes a shot. <laughs> Second down, 10 from the 49. Vaughn, the single running back. Blitz coming. He gets rid of it to Ben Coates as Bobby Houston drilled. Hugh Millen, he goes down, but gets a very short gain on the play of three yards, and that's paying a big price for a three-yard pickup on a play. Give him four yards. It'll be third down and six yards. Let's go back and take a look at this blitz right here. Here is Houston, who's going to come on the inside blitz. Here's the receiver that's going to go right behind him to make the catch. They give Millen some credit. He's taking uh, some heat. He's getting beaten up but he's still reading blitzes and getting rid of the ball on time. 
the third and six, they're blitzing Ronnie Young. Mellon comes out of there, and he's going to get the first down. He's the 30 laterals to the far side of Fryer, and Fryer goes out of bounds at the 20. When things aren't going well, you got to make something happen. Yeah. That's a 26-yard gain, and Mellon, again, hit hard, getting up very slowly. They, if nothing else, you Mellon, well, he did it last year, too. It shows you that he can take some shots. And, and with as young as his offensive line is, he's going to take a lot more this year. We also talked about him being a big guy, 6'5", 215 pounds, but he's got some escapability, if there's such a word. Just, if there isn't, I just made it up. And then, he, then the impromptu play. I mean, this you are really stretching when you're trying to make something like that happen. So a little option play, 30 yards downfield. I don't know how he got out of there in the first place. Showed real strength. First down from the 21. Millen going to the end zone. And the catch is made by Irving Fryer. Touchdown, New England. Their third touchdown of the season. cannot say enough about Hugh Millen. He showed such courage on that drive, taking pounding after pounding, and got it done. Yeah, and, you know, and Dick McPher McPherson appreciates it. I mean, he, he, he understands. And he said last night, we don't have any dominating players. We don't have any superstars. And we're going to live with our offensive line. They're going to make some mistakes. Our quarterback's going to get hit. But Hugh Millen just responded. Point after attempt. Bauman, who missed one this year, gets this one underway and hit it. Hey, remember Kevin Kiley? Yes. Said the said they couldn't we're score. not going to score. We're going to have Kevin Kiley come down here and cover Irving Fryer. When the ball's in the air, Irving Fryer can still make plays for the Patriots. Fryer caught two of those balls for 40 yards and the touch. Yeah, they have a solid quarterback in you, know, the Patriots do. It'll be Mathis. And they're fired up. Turner went flying through the air. Gary, let's go back and take a look at the touchdown and see what can happen when you get some good offensive line protection. Good offensive line protection there allows Fryer to run the post pattern and it gives you Millen the time to look a couple of different directions before he delivers the ball. Now, it's one of the very few times he had that protection tonight. Now, look at his eyes. He's going to look left. He looks right. He comes back to the left and finds his only big play receiver, really, in Irving Fryer, who goes up around, uh, actually, Michael Timpson, the other receiver for the touch. This is the worst starting field position the Jets have experienced. They start from the 13. Nagel comes back. He completes it to Toon, and Toon makes a spin move out to the 18-yard line. It'll bring up second down. Gary, you were mentioning the comeback earlier of the Minnesota Vikings today. They were down by 20 points to the Chicago Bears in the fourth quarter. The Vikings came back, and you know Rich Gannon really had some uh, tough moments early in that game, but hung in there and hung in there and hung in there and found a way to win. And on that drive, Hugh Millen did the same kind of thing. I mean, he was beaten up and battered, but he hung in there and drilled the ball for a touchdown. Second and five for the Jets. Freeman McNeil in the backfield. Knocked down at the 20-yard line. And you can see that that offensive fireworks has fired up the Patriots defense. It comes to third down and still three. By the way, that catch by Fryer, of the 12 touchdown passes that Millen has thrown in his career, six of them have gone to Irving Fryer. Right. That's the big play guy that they need to have. Well, here, here is one of the, the important downs of the game for the, for the Patriots. They scored the touchdown. Now they've got the Jets in third and about three. They call the blitz off. They give to Freeman McNeil. He has the first down. Stayed on his feet across the 25 to the 27-yard line. You know, Freeman McNeil can still play. And what Bruce Coslett was saying yesterday about Freeman McNeil, he says, hey, you know, every once in a while, I just put him in the game to spark our team. And here on third down, this guy can still block, he can catch, and he can stumble, and he can run. 
and he can pick up first downs. And you don't you don't see many 12-year running backs doing those all the things that Freeman McNeil can still do. So he stumbled to that first down to the 27. Flushed out, dumps it off to Rob Moore, and Moore will be dropped at the 30, a gain of two, and it'll bring up a second down. Now, Brownie Nagel said something interesting, I thought, yesterday about Rob Moore. And he said, Rob Moore has so much speed, and they believe he can run by any defensive back, is that in all our routes, we ask him to go two yards farther than any other player. So if the out route is 16 yards, Moore goes 18. That's the kind of speed he has. Now, they've used him just on crossing routes tonight. You'd like to think they're going to get the ball to him up top sometime later. Second down, seven yards to go. Moore is split to the near side. Nagel looking to the other side instead, and Burkett makes the catch. Out to the 39, and that'll be another first down. So Nagel now... Picking and choosing and doing a good job of distributing the football, Eugene Lockhart made the stop for the Patriots. When you have tall receivers like Bruce Coslett does, you run hook patterns, you run slants, and you use your body like a basketball player screening out defenders. You see the height there. Now, the defensive corners for the Patriots are 5'10 and 5'9. This, this is where the game is changing, I think, in the NFL. Receivers getting taller, corners staying at 5'8", 5 5'9", 5 and 5'10". Well, Carpenter is recruited by Jim Beheim, the basketball coach at Syracuse. You're talking about basketball-type players. First down, Nagel, a slant, and that's Moore, and he's got it at the 45. A first down, and Moore a little bit shaken on the play. I think he's just upset. I think he, he felt he could have broken that tackle and scored. 16-yard gain, and some of that speed that Pat was talking about was evidence there. Jets are really putting together a very impressive drive. But again, the ball gets there quickly from Brownie Nagel, and that's a throw a receiver will appreciate because uh, Rob Moore feels, look at the height differential there between Poole, but Rob Moore feels that safety coming. And that's why he's trying to cut, and that's why he stumbled. But with a strong arm quarterback, he can get the ball there without getting hit. They go 4-4 on this drive. Hand off on the delay to Blair Thomas, who's come back in to the 40. And Thomas runs in trying to get the first down. He needs to get just inside the 35. And Lockhart with yet another tackle. Lockhart doesn't run all that well, but he really hustles as he's good tackle to tackle running the play down. It'll bring up a yard short of the first down, second down. So we talked about the zone blocking of this offensive line. Watch all these guys come this way. Thomas starts here, and he comes right back here when he sees that's where the soft spot is. Again, it's that horizontal blocks the Jets' offensive line specializes in, not, not the vertical ones, and then the running back just picks a spot. Second and one. 3.53 to go in the third quarter. Baxter trying to swing wide. He gets away from Singleton, and then he's dropped as he gets inside the 35 to the 34 by Ray Agnew. Agnew and Singleton were their number one draft picks in 90. Agnew was the second pick in the first round. But, you know, that, that really is part of the problem with the Patriots. Ray Agnew and Chris Singleton have been injured so much, they still don't know whether these guys can play like number one draft picks. They, they really have been injured in their entire three years in the NFL. One of the neat stories, though, is that Chris's twin brother, Kevin, who had leukemia at the University of Arizona, and Chris uh, gave him a bone marrow transplant, is doing very well playing the Canadian Football League now with Saskatchewan. And that is good news for the Singleton family. First down for the 34. Play action by Nagel. To Blair Thomas. Thomas will be stopped short of the 25, about two yards short of the first down. Lockhart again with a tackle. That's six tackles now for Eugene, the hitting machine, Lockhart. Yeah, the play action fake, wonderful there by, by Brownie Nagel. But the offensive linemen do their part as well. And, and I really believe that's the key. Here, watch the offensive line. They make it look like run. And that's what sold everybody inside, that it was indeed a run, but nope. It was a little pass out there to Blair Thomas. Offensive lineman, self-play action. 
Tenth play of the drive coming up. Freeman McNeil. And the Patriots react well, and he's short of the first down. It'll bring up third down. Chris Singleton was there. Well, looking ahead, next Sunday we'll be back in the Superdome. It'll be the Saints squaring off against the Rams. And then four nights later, we travel to the Metrodome in Minnesota as those exciting Vikings, led by Rich Gannon, take on the Lions. The Silver Bullet Stadium show kicking off at 7 o'clock Eastern. Be sure to join us. I was very impressed with the Vikings come back today. How about Chris Dolman? I mean, Chris Dolman has, what, eight or nine sacks now? He is playing sensational, Chris Dolman. Third and a yard to go. There's that play action fake again, and Baxter carrying for the first down. One thing about Nagel that's different, Pat, is when he fakes, he bends over more than most quarterbacks that you see in the NFL. Well, you know, it's the same thing Boomer Esiason did, in, in, it does, still does in Cincinnati, and remember Coslett coached him there in Cincinnati. But, but here's, again, it, it's deception. Everything looks the same. You know, and they have a grading sheet, and on Monday morning, if Brownie Nagel doesn't continue his fakes, he gets a lot of C's and D's, and most quarterbacks aren't used to C's and D's, believe me. So they're going to measure to see. I thought Baxter had the first down, but they're going to bring the sticks out and see if, in fact, that he does. And he's short. Fourth down. Well, I think the way this offensive line is playing right now for the Jets, I think you go for it. Now, Bruce Coslett was criticized for uh, going for it against, uh, against San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, Gary, on fourth and three. But he had a strategy there. He said we had to have touchdowns, not field goals against those guys. But right now, I think he feels his offensive line has got control of this game. Well, for the year, they are four of nine on fourth down. Fourth and less than a yard to go. <laughs> Baxter this time off the left side. And that should have gotten it. It'll be a first down at the 23-yard line. Make it the 24. As we have 57 seconds left in the third quarter. The Jets with a 17-7 lead. The Patriots scoring here in the third quarter. Left side of the offensive line has a pretty nice surge here. They really got it, got, got some movement over there and, and allowed Baxter who's a great short yardage runner. Last year he has 11 touchdown runs in short yardage because he slides and slips off people. This drive starting from their own 13 and Nickel this time behind Freeman McNeil. That'll stop the clock with 26 seconds. Well, they have held the ball since the 9-18 mark of this quarter and we have 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We're at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford. The Jets and Patriots looking for their first win of the year. The Jets had a 17 to nothing halftime lead. Now with a 17 to seven lead, they have a second down 10 at the 24. I'm Gary Bender along with Pat Hayden. Glad to have you with us in week five of the NFL. Print draw handoff to Baxter. Getting a lot of work in this last three or four plays as Andre Tippett, a four-time Pro Bowler for the Patriots, makes the tackle. If the Jets can continue this this year with this ground game, run the football like that, and with the wide receivers they have, and if Brownie Nagel comes on as a young quarterback with some promise, they have a team of really being, uh, have a chance of being a much better football team by the end of the season. Last year, they averaged 135 yards rushing a game. Much better tonight after struggling the first four games of the year. Poor, but, you know, we talked about you needed to play. Somebody had to step up and respond, and Brent Williams was that guy for the Patriots. And that, that's a big play, and they haven't had a lot of them this season. Blanchard with a 37-yarder earlier, now from 40 yards away. Kick on the way, and Blanchard, their new acquisition, is two for two. 20 to seven, the Jets with the lead. We have 14.52 left to go. 
one yard line. The way Blanchard's been kicking the ball, I would think Give he should shot, kick yeah. off. Anyway, the Patriots going to try to respond with 14:47 left. And Hasty with his first interception of the year. You know, Bruce Costler said yesterday about James Hasty, it's, you know, this ball should have been thrown away. And I think he was trying to. But Costler said about Hasty, if everybody were playing as well as James Hasty is, we wouldn't be 0-4. This is a guy as a defensive back who wants the ball thrown to his side, wants to cover the best receiver in the game, and then he makes a catch like that. A test drive. Six miles on smooth roads. If I was only driving six miles on smooth roads, I'd buy a bike. I'd get in shape. Let me test drive in rush hour traffic so I can see if it'll last like a Subaru. Let me test drive at the snowy Alaska so I can... Now inside the 35 to the 33, gain a five on the play. That's just inexperience, though, by Millen. You're going to get rid of that ball. Get rid of it. Don't... Uh... You know, in between balls on that situation. But but this is a... is a, And again, we talked about him being, although a five-year veteran, an inexperienced quarterback and young quarterbacks that both these teams have you're going to have some growing pains and the quarterbacks are going to cost you some games from time to time but in the long haul they both these teams have made up their mind about these guys and I think that's a plus second down five yards to go Moore goes in motion for the Jets the late handoff to Blair Thomas and Thomas inside the 20 to the 29 yard line two yards short of the first down this is a time of game where offensive linemen love to play and they love to play against nose tackles like Fred Smurlis number 76 he and Sweeney now, now Smurlis is fighting through two players he felt the pressure fought through the double team and then makes a, talk, a tackle and that's what your your nose tackle has to has to do when he feels a double team block he knows the play is going on that side of the ball. 11 years of the Bills, one year at the 49ers, finishing his career with the Patriots. Third down and a yard to go. Hagel didn't fool anybody on the fake. Tried to hit Boyer, who was covered by Robbins. Patriots reacted really well on that play. Good pressure that time from Tim Edwards, who was activated for this game out of Delta State, so it brings up a fourth down. Boy, the defense, again, on, in a sudden change situation, and one of those things after a turnover, again, did a pretty doggone good job for the Patriots. Blanchard now is two of two, going for his third field goal of the night. This will be the longest of 47. Patriots need a block here. Somebody's got to block this field goal attempt. O'Brien to hold. Snap is a good one, and Blanchard kick is on the way, and Blanchard is three for three, and you can see why the Saints didn't want to give him up. <laughs> they were waiting for Morton Anderson to see if the tendonitis in his knee would come around, and finally had to let him go. The Nittles were hammered today by the Dolphins. One reason, the play of Lewis Oliver intercepts this pass and set sail 103 yards, tying the NFL record set by Vincey Glenn five years ago. Lewis Oliver makes the Isuzu play of the day. Now back to Gary and Pat. Lewis Oliver, we're talking about he had been so embarrassed earlier in his career as a defensive back. Right there in the same field. Yep. Against the, uh, the Bills, they, they had to actually replace him. They took him out of the game in a playoff game against Miami, uh, against the Bills. And then he has a big play tonight. I've always, you know, you always see the shot of Giants, yeah. Dave. The white things, those are the lights. There they are. I, I always wondered what the heck those white things were, and now I know. And there's, you oh. see off camera right in between the lights? We just spare no expense yep. telling you what's going on here. What kind of game it is. We're talking about the lights. <laughs> Ten points by the Jets now off of three turnovers. As Turner has returned another ki kickoff, he fair catches two of them. This time he gets it out to the 38-yard line. Well, it's a call play with Aguiar kicking high in the air, but I'm not real sure that it's that effective as the Patriots have good field position. Boy, in this half, the Patriots have had the football only four minutes and 34 seconds. The Jets over 12, 12 minutes and 41 seconds to be exact. 
Looking ahead, it doesn't get any easier, does it, for yeah, Bill? This is, yeah, this is supposed to be a fifth-place schedule. And they got the 49ers uh, October 11th, and then the, at the Dolphins. Obviously, that's a, a division game, so you expect to play those teams. But, wow. 12.33 left in the game. Millen complete to Mark Cook, and he'll be wrapped up and tackled instantly by Bobby Houston, who's made a lot of open field tackles in this game. And they're going to pick up on the play three yards. It'll be second and seven. Without a huddle, they're in a hurry-up offense. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. Vaughn is in the backfield. Milling up the middle, Cook again, and Cook makes a squatting catch, and he's a yard short of the first down. You know, I made an error when I said the, the, the Patriots have that fifth-place schedule. The Colts do, quite honestly, and I think that's precisely one of the problems that the Patriots, when you're trying to bring your team back, is as you, you play a little bit better, they win six games, they play a more difficult schedule this year, and it's tough to get to eight names. Millen comes up, throws complete to Greg McMurtry, and that's the first time we've called his name tonight as he makes the first down catch at the 47-yard line. And so the hurry-up seemingly giving him a little rhythm and not allowing the Jets to get set and put some heat on Millen. Well, you know, this is how the no-huddle was born, quite honestly, up in Buffalo. It was in a two-minute situation in the playoff game the Bills had against Cleveland, and they, got so, they did so well, they just kept it. Millen double-pumping, being flushed out by Marvin Washington. He's going to take off and run. Frays chases him out, and he'll go out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Well, you, Millen, is going to wear out the Whirlpool tomorrow. I mean, that thing's going to have both motors running. But he did have Timpson open. Here he is, number 83, Michael Timpson. Now, he does have some speed as well. He's right in a little soft spot there saying, hey, I'm open. Give me the ball. Come on. I'm ready. Now I'm open. By the way, that last tackle goes as a sack. So that's the seventh sack of the game for the Jets. And Millen this time dragged down by Mo Lewis, who runs so well. He was a consensus all-rookie pick a year ago. A lot of people picked him right behind Mike Kroll, the outstanding rookie a year ago, the Denver Broncos. It's third down now and still five yards to go. Inside, 11 minutes left in the game. 23 to 7, the Jets are the lead. Millen again, protecting his air, and that's all he needs to connect with Fryer. And fryer has got a first down catch inside the 25-yard line. Mike Brim over to make the stop, an 18-yard pickup, and they're moving the football. Well, we said today is the day of the NFL fourth quarter comebacks, and if the Patriots are going to come back, Irving Fryer, I think, is the guy who's going to have to continue to make those kind of plays. Get the ball to him upfield. Millen again without a huddle. Completes a pass to Ben Coates, a tight end, a flag on the play as he dropped at the 11-yard line. Coates had four catches last week. That's a 13-yard gain if it stands. Patriots have a couple of good tight ends in Coates and Marv Cook. This is going to go oh. against New England. Illegal use of the hands by one of the receivers. Offensive pass interference, number 83, 10 yards, repeat first down. That's Timpson. So that, for a moment, stalls what has been a very effective hurry-up offense by New England. Penalty moves it back out to the 34. Timpson's number 83 in the right. He is blocking when the ball is in the air, and that's offensive pass interference. Good call. So it'll be first and 20 now for New England. Millen with a strike to Timpson, and Timpson rolls up with it, and there's another flag. He went out of bounds at the 23, an 11-yard gain, but it's holding oh, against New England, so they've wiped out a 13 and 11-yard gains with penalties. Holding, and, and, that, that, offense, and that tells 63, you about their season. The shake of the head by Dick McPherson. Well, Mr. Energy, Coach Mack is one of the delightful guys who've ever been around the coaching profession. Let's look at the history of New England. Number 85 was that Super Bowl year that the Patriots, now, admittedly, they got blown out by the Bears, but they had a Super Bowl year. They come back in 1986, and they won the, uh, the East again. 87, they had kind of a winning year. And then the things really kind of fell off the table in 89 and 90. Well, 90, they won one game, one and 15. Now it's going to bring up first and 30 as they have the ball at the 44-yard line. Millen getting some time, and that ball at 
the last second deflected away intended for McMurtry and Brian Washington with a very alert play kept that from being completed. You know, Brian, Brian Washington has played well in a couple of different spots tonight. I mean, he played some linebacker where he's picked off a pass in the first half here in the deep uh, defensive backfield. The ball's in the air. He makes a close on it to knock it away. Second and 30. Millen throwing the ball this time. Completes a prior. Gets inside the 40 to the 39. I'll tell you, the Jets defensively got hands on hips. They are tired trying to step up and play defense against this hurry. If you see why it's so effective, if you can run it with a precision that Millen's done a good job with thus far. It looks like Fryer is shaken up. He's got to come out of the game. No, he's going to stay. As Millen ran over to him and said something to him, but he's hurting. He has five catches, 103 yards. Third and 25. And Millen's going to go. Fryer, touchdown. That lift was a fake. That lift, remember old Newt Rockney did that? that? I think that limp was a setup. I think Fryer came out limping over on the on the sideline and, and, and it looked like they relaxed and all of a sudden when the ball was snapped boom he takes off it was a pump fake i, I think it's a designated call by dick corey the offensive coordinator I wonder if that's part of the immediate family of fryer he had to get 25 tickets yeah. for the game because he's from mount holly new jersey and uh <laughs> he's grinning but what was so interesting about that pat is that millen ran clear over to him and talked to him and then came back and assumed his position that, that's an interesting play. I mean, you haven't seen that since old, old New Rockney. 38 yard touchdown. He's now six for 141 in receiving. Point after by Bauman. And we have a 23 to 14 game. I mean, again, he comes out of the huddle, he's limping, but he's not limping there. And they felt they could get Mike Brim to bite. And they certainly did. Do you ever feel that your present car or truck is being worked on more often than you're able to drive it? That you're so busy spending your time laughing <laughs> about that play oh, from that's a great you, setup. Mellon, to Fryer, and we're going to show it to you how they faked the Jets into it. <laughs> it's a great one. <laughs> this will be Eric McMillan bringing it out to the Jets. Up to the 20, 25, 30, and out of bounds. Now, let's go back. Hey, you hey, take it. Can you do it? Lawrence Olivier couldn't have done this any better. Now, watch. Yeah, there's the limp, and then you're going to see him kind of laugh about it and smile. Now, yeah, he, <laughs> he, there's the smile and the laugh. Now watch what he takes off. He's at the top of the screen up there. There's no limp in that run. And he gives a little stop, and then they go. And then he goes in the end zone and waves to his sister, Hope, who got the ball. <laughs> that is a great one. I love it. <laughs> now there's a man who's studying for the ministry, too. <laughs> from the 30-yard line. Deception <laughs> for the Jets. <laughs> 14 points. That is one more point that he scored the first three games of the year as this completion goes to Al Toon, bringing it out to the 34-yard line. Well, we talked about a lot of comebacks. Let's document some of them as we bring you tonight's Silver Bullet scoreboard. And there's one of the biggest ones of the day with the Vikings trailing 20 to nothing. Jeff George making his debut in 92. Dolphins with uh, Keith Jackson making a debut for him. The Saints winning with that good defense again. Morton Anderson had a couple of 50-yard field goals. Second down and six yards to go. About that play. Here's Blair Thomas <laughs> getting away from Hurst, and then Robbins up to stop him along with Agnew, and it'll bring up third down. <laughs> Let's continue on if we get Pat to quit laughing here for a little bit. I love bit. that. I really do. And Elway again, 21st comeback. Now, we had the first 20th, the first game of the year, remember, when they came back to beat the Raiders. And Steve Young with another strong game as they came from behind. The Raiders winning their first game of the year in the Coliseum. And Bobby Ross with his first win in the National Football League. And we still have a ball game here. I mean, the, the Patriot defense has played pretty well in the second half. Seven minutes and 25 seconds remaining. Another one of those important third downs for the Patriot defense. And they've responded this half on third down defense. Third and two now for Nagel. 
17 left in the game. Thomas, and he's got it. A second effort bouncing off of people. He'll make somebody miss, and he did there. Singleton, along with Tippett, made the stop. He has 72 yards now on 13 carries, so that's his high for the season. 72 well, yards. And what Blair Thomas has done a nice job of tonight, and what he did right there well, was run sideways. I mean, if he runs straight ahead and tries to overpower some people, he's not going to get the first down. But he had a little move to the left, to the right, he gets the first. Thomas remains in the backfield, three wide outs, first down. Hits near side to two, makes a nice move, trying to tackle the ball, and he takes one in the chops as he goes down to the 40. And you can hear the background tune. 17-yard pickup on the play. Did we talk about the size and what you want in size is strength as well? The mismatch. Uh, Hurst is 5'10, Tune is 6'4. It's not just the jump, jump balls, but it's the strength and making guys miss like that. I mean, that's what with the teams that. Uh, you know, following the 49ers lead of a couple of years ago, starting to draft a lot taller receivers. Remember, shaking up a little bit. He tried to tackle the ball. First down to the 40-yard line. Friedman McNeil comes into the backfield. 5.40 left in the game. 23-14, the Jets with the lead. Nagel up the middle to take the Burkett. And Chris Burkett has a first down inside the 25 to the 23. Well, that, that's a good throw by Brownie Nagel because Randy Robbins, the strong safety for the Patriots, guessed. And he thought Nagel was going outside. Robbins is number 48. See, he's going to the flat. And when he leaves that spot, Brownie Nagel finds Burkett right in the middle. A good read by Brownie Nagel. Burkett was the team MVP a year ago. Outstanding special teams player and also an outstanding man coming off the bench at a wide receiver spot. First down. McNeil and McNeil backs inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. Well, the post-game stadium show, and we're hoping that this Holiday Inn post-game stadium show will tell us the story behind the 38-yard touchdown pass from Hugh Millen to Irving Fryer. I want to hear yeah. it. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, that's my favorite play of the year so far. I mean, that, that, that was... That's terrific. And, and give Dick Corey some credit. There he is. He's in his sleeping bag. He's through for the night, I guess. <laughs> Second down, six <laughs> yards to go. Well, well, he hopes not because there's still 4.14 left. Nagel going up top. Rod Moore makes an adjustment, catches it for the touchdown, but there's a flag. That may be offensive. He made an adjustment, but he may have used his hands to do that. 19-yard yeah. Touchdown if it stands. They could call that either way. They could call that either way. First trying to influence that decision. <laughs> I don't blame him. Defensive pass interference on number 37. Uh, no. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. So it stands. It was Hurst against Moore, and Moore got the better of it. Well, then we saw uh, Moore at the bottom of the screen, number 85. There's some pushing and shoving going on. I really didn't think it was interference, quite honestly, on, on either one of them. Remember early in the game, though, we said Moore, they were going to set him up. They ran those crossing routes, and sooner or later, they're going to go up top to him. And they did right there for the touch. 29-14. Blanchard point after attempt coming up. And Blanchard adds the 30th point of the night. Four minutes left to go in this one. We'll be back. Well, no Every day, two million travelers set out to do business. Last year I traveled 65 days. days. Who would know better what they need than Holiday Inn? I always rehearse my presentation. I always rehearse my presentation. I always in front of the bedroom the bathroom mirror. We make them feel welcome in so many ways. Maybe that's why more business travelers stay with us than anyone else. I miss what most. I miss most is my but children. Holiday Inn. Stay with someone you know who really knows you. 
The Goodyear Blimp Spirit from Akron, Ohio, providing TNT with a blimp's eye view of the action here from the Meadowlands in East Rutherford. Nagel with that touchdown toss, his second of the night, has 194 yards, hit 20 of 33, and he's thrown to eight different people in this game. Aguiar, let's see if uh, he does his little pop-up job here. You know, the bad news about that fake injury, you can only do that play once. <laughs> I'd love to see it again, but you can only do that play once. You think they might pick it up in the yeah. tape somewhere, huh? <laughs> so. Hey, he's kicking off this time, and the crowd responds. Yeah. Stanley will bring it out to the 15 and drag down at the 18-yard line. Marcus Turner over to make the stop. Hugh Millen will come back in at quarterback with 3.52 left in the game. 30-14, to 14, the Patriots well, the, trailing. The Patriots clearly are not going to win this football game, but I'll tell you, they, they, all, they, they learned a lot about themselves and I think their team. They learned that they have a tough quarterback in Hugh Millen. A guy that can take a lot of punishment, hang in there, that doesn't get discouraged and is not going to quit on you. And their defense, I thought this second half, played pretty well. Well, we had a late flag, an offside on the kickoff, the Jets. Why do they do that when it's 30 to 14? Got to play by the rules, Pat, all the way. You were that, kind of, that kind of kid, I bet. Yeah, that's right. Growing up. That's always right. playing, but you ever get in trouble? Well, the trouble is I'm staying with you now, and I'm starting to bend all those rules. <laughs> <laughs> so the five-yard penalty will Loose. move it back to the 30-yard line. And John Riggins would say, loosen up, Sandy, baby. <laughs> Well, Bruce Coslett on his way to his first win of the year. And uh, he got some things that uh, has to encourage him. Nagel, pretty strong game, using those wide receivers so effectively. Running offensive the ball line, yeah. better. Offensive line played very well, I thought. The defense had defense had a great pass rush, considering their, their two best pass rushers, the two defensive ends, Dennis Bird and, and Jeff Lagerman, are out. The six sacks coming early in the game as the uh, Patriots stabilized a little bit. I'll tell you what I was so impressed with, and maybe the person has to think about this, is use that no huddle more often, that hurry up. They maybe. seemed to protect Millen, and, and the Jets were kind of on their heels in that series trying to, to stop the drive. Well, Dick McPherson just can't let this team give up. I mean, it's, it's a hard to do when you're, you know, now heading toward the middle of October and you haven't won a game yet. He doesn't want to go 0 for October as he did 0 for September. Stanley and Vaughn are back. Aguiar will kick off. And kicks off to Stanley on the near side. He ought to let that go out of bounds, and he does. So they'll start this from the 35-yard line. Well, in 86, that was a year the Patriots kick off made it to bounds. the Super Bowl, the and only three play. guys remain from that football team. It was the 85 season, the 86 Super Bowl. That's exactly right. Three guys. Irving Fryer, uh, the great actor, Irving Fryer tonight. But think about uh, what happened with the Chicago Bears. That, that, that's a kind of a telling story. You see all the players left from the Chicago Bears Super Bowl team. After today, though, <laughs> Mike Ditkin may get rid of a few of those guys. <laughs> Boy, was he hot? Oh. Ooh. Steaming. Mellon back on a first down. And oh, a big oh. hit. I mean, a big hit was put on Sam Gash, the rookie out of Penn State. It was Eric McMillan who hit him. Mm. And Gash is still groggy. What a pop he took. You know, he has not carried the ball or has been throwing the ball in the regular season of play. And what a way to get your first yeah. offensive opportunity. And right now, he's not breathing at all. I want to tell you. Ooh. Sam Gash, who played for Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions a year ago. Great. Second down 10. Millen to Cook to the far side, and Hasty will wrestle him out of bounds, just short of the 45. You know, going back to that Chicago Bears situation, the worst thing the Chicago Bears have right now, after the way they lost today, is, is a week off. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, you, you give up 21 points in the fourth quarter, you lose the game, Mike Dick is going crazy. And then you get a week off. That's the worst thing that can happen. I'm sure Dick and Harbaugh will sit close to each other in the film room. <laughs> Put the plane right home. <laughs> Hopefully they're home by now. Here is a pass complete to Fryer. Fryer dropped at the 40-yard line. 15-yard gain. He is playing hard. Yeah. 
trying to give this team some leadership. He has seven catches now, 157 yards and two touchdowns. The, as Pat would say, the Lawrence Olivier of the Patriots. <laughs> Mellon double pumping over the middle, complete to Coates, and Coates will be wrestled down by Lonnie Young. Lonnie Young's made a lot of tackles in this game, and uh, it'll bring up a couple of yards short of the first down. Yeah, Lonnie Young has played well. He's made tackles. He's been involved in pass defense. And he's covered the tight end one-on-one. -on -one. Kevin Turner's coming to the backfield on a second and three, and the completion for a first down to the 25, McMurtry. And again, they're in that hurry-up posture, and they've got a nice rhythm yeah, to Yeah, maybe they just do it. And again, as, as we said, the Bills started their whole system in a situation just like this. rhythm again hits coach coach stays on his feet inside the 15 to the 12 and that'll be another first down for new england as we're approaching the two-minute warning that's a 13-yard pickup on the play still she ought to be able to get one more play in before the warning if the official gets the ball set don't think they're going to make snap. it uh, two-minute warning is here and so the jets are two minutes away from victory number one in this season 30 to 14 they lead new england I think we, one of the Jets players may have kicked that ball. He kicked that ball, That's and a so now they. Warning. No. He may have kicked it, but there's no penalty to go along with it. We'll come back. Line of scrimmage, the 13-yard line. It's not just a high-performance tire. It's a Michelin. So it does things ordinary tires just can't do. Lost their keys. They will not find their automobiles or be able to start them after I this game. Hope you can find yours <laughs> after the game's over. From the 13-yard line now, first down. Hugh Millen, uh, some valuable playing time right now. Marching the team here with these two minutes remaining. He has all three of these timeouts remaining. And he almost had his seventh sack. Still looking around, and he crosses the line of scrimmage for the oh, man. Oh, last shot. shot there. Get up, you. Oh, yeah. Please man. get up. Oh. You hear that all the way reverberating up here. Lonnie Young delivered the blow. And uh, Hugh is up and walking, and that's great news. Hodson getting ready on the near sideline if he needs to come in. Tommy Hodson, they're back up. We, talk <laughs> we talked about leadership. And you do it in a lot of ways. We said, hey, quarterbacks, young quarterbacks have to do it themselves. I think Hugh's going to have to get out yeah. of there. And Hugh Millen, I think tonight, has become a leader for this Patriot team. Unfortunately, he's had a, it's been a great physical expense. It was a timeout by the Patriots, so they have two timeouts remaining with 141, and Hugh coming to the near side and last thing they need now is to get him hurt in the last two minutes of this game. He's going to stay in. There's certainly nothing wrong with his courage. And what a pleasant guy. In fact, he came up and he says, I like that call you guys did in 1984 <laughs> when I threw that 70-yard touchdown pass yeah, against Michigan and yeah, Ann Arbor. He, he remembers. remembered that. But, you know, leadership is something that evolves. And I, and I think the Patriots have really found something special tonight in you Miller. Second and two after that scramble by Hugh. Looking to the goal line, and he had to throw it low as Young was waiting there. The intended receiver was Marv Cook, and it's third down, too. It's easy to get discouraged as a quarterback. Your team is losing, you're taking a beating. But the thing about Hugh Millen tonight is he has not gotten discouraged. The Holiday Inn Stadium Show. Bob Neal and uh, Kenton Stabler and Kevin Kiley waiting, and... Uh, be sure, Bob Neal, if you're listening, to ask Kevin Kiley yeah. why the Patriots couldn't score in this game. <laughs> yeah. They only got 14, Kev. Look at him. Yeah, yeah I see him. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Yeah. We, we heard you, Kevin. 14 points. Patriots <laughs> scored 14. They better make him do 14 push-ups or something. There may be more if nothing can do something here. And broken up and incomplete. It was Fryer at the goal line, the intended receiver, and Marcus Turner was over there and got a piece of it. Fourth down. 
So obviously they're going to go for it here. And they're going to use the timeout. So the Patriots have one timeout remaining. Mellon is still limping as he comes to the near side. You he, blame him? No. There's not a part of his body that hasn't been battered and beaten. Well, looking ahead, next Sunday, the Superdome will return for the Saints against the Rams. Jim Everett, who has been bringing the Rams back, playing much better. And then four days later, we'll be in the Metrodome. The Lions and Vikings, and I have a newfound respect for the Minnesota Vikings. Denny Green has been playing so well. The Lions losing again today. They've gone through so much adversity. Yeah. You wonder how much of a toll that's taken on them. But those are the two games that uh, we hope you'll plan on joining us. You know, we talk about the beating that you Millen has taken. His right elbow, you, know, you, you can see it's bleeding. It's got scabs. It's got all kinds of ugly stuff on there. And that's what happens when you take a take as many shots as you Millen did tonight. I mean, he took a season full tonight. Fourth down, two. 132 left in the game. Give Fryer a chance. He's on the near side, but he's not limping. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're going to use their final timeout. No, wait a minute. The no. Jets are going to call a timeout. And a good defensive timeout there. A good defensive timeout. You take a look. And Pete Carroll, the defensive coordinator there, wants to look at the formation. Now, the Patriots, quite honestly, should come back with a different formation. You don't want to run that same play. Or if you do, run it from a different formation. So Mellon comes to the near side to talk to Coach Mack with now still 132 left in this game. I think the Jets didn't have all their players on the field. They may have had 10 out there and had to call for that timeout. And that shouldn't happen after a timeout. But if you look at thinking for you, Miller, you, you think uh, Irving Fryer and then maybe Marv Cook, the tight end. Big target in Marv Cook, big play receiver in Irving Fryer. Or if he gets a man-for-man -man defense, you're on the quarterback draw. Anything else I haven't called? <laughs> How about a flea flicker? <laughs> Could you use that not for the five-yard no, line? Not down here. It'll be McMurtry to the top prior to the bottom of the field. Millen looking to cut. He got a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Fourth down, and he delivers, and that gives you some confidence. Yeah. The game started as a game of quarterbacks and confidence, or young quarterbacks trying to gain some confidence. I think both of them have tonight. Marv Cook, big target, big receiver. They take away Irving Fryer, so what do you do? Good block there by Bruce Armstrong, the left tackle, too. That, that gave him the time. Good separation between the uh, tight end Cook and the defensive back, and a well-thrown ball by you Miller. Well, for a team that had scored 13 points in their first three, they're about to score their 21st here tonight. And Kevin Kiley's going to be doing those 21 push-ups on the postgame show. I don't think he can do it. I don't think he can either. Point after Temp Hudson the hold, the kick by Bauman, and it's 30 to 21. 60-yard drive and 10 plays. Left side of the screen, number 85. Watch the body position that he has on Brian Washington. And the perfectly thrown ball away from the defender as the big receiver uses his body between the ball and the defender to make the touch. Down catch. Fryer explaining how he faked that play earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that fake play, in addition to all the outstanding efforts tonight, eight catches, 165 <laughs> yards, and two touchdowns, gives him not only the McDonald's player of the game, but an Oscar. <laughs> And he deserves it, I want to tell you. Hollywood will be calling. New career in the making. I tell you, I love the laugh coming out of the huddle, though. <laughs> you know, when you limp and you fake the injury, you can't be laughing. By the way, those 165 yards, that's kind of surprising, but Roger Ryler, a statistician, says that's a career high. I would have guessed he'd had more than that somewhere. Well, you know, everybody thought he was a bust as the number one draft pick in the draft when he came out in 1984 from Nebraska. But last year... You talked about his maturity. It was a was a breakthrough year. He had over 1,000 yards in receptions. Onside kick coming up. Down by nine with a minute 28. And here it goes up into the air. The good hands guys are there. And I think Burkett got it. Chris Burkett went high into the air and pulled it down. And so the Jets will get it at the 49 of New England. 
Well, this is one of these games, Pat, where both teams can look at some positives. The way the game started, it oh, looked like yeah. we weren't going to have anything positive happen in this game. Yeah, they, they started this game like they were both 0 and 7. And uh, or be uh, between them, they were 0 and 7. And they gave you every indication why in the first couple of series. But then the game really settled down. And I think you just hit a significant point. Your first of the year, I might add, Gary. But <laughs> a very too. significant point in that they really have something to build on here. I mean, the Jets get their first win, and the Patriots didn't quit, and they came back and scored 21 points. I'll tell you one guy that didn't quit was Hugh Millen. He has all my admiration. So they'll drop to a knee. New England does have one timeout remaining if they choose to use it. And we talked about the Super Bowl year of the Patriots. The Jets, was it 1968, that Super Bowl year? 68 and 69 dominant, only seven winning seasons the white lines are uh, playoffs seven winning seasons since that super bowl year and again I, as we said earlier i think they need to forget about that past and build yeah. on a young quarterback named brownie nagel well there's still a lot of joe namath talk nothing wrong with talking about joe namath but they do look back yeah. it's always joe namath this this is yep. when we did that it was the same thing happened in green bay for so many years the vince lombardi era you had Pittsburgh. almost a disadvantage yeah, i agree but uh, what a great player he was. And so <laughs> that's a new headgear. I like that one. <laughs> that's uh, Jeff Blake, the rookie out of East Carolina. And so this game has ended. And Bruce Coslett, a little bit of a smile there as he picked up his first win. Is that what that was? <laughs> so they now go to one and four. Dick McPherson's team now still looking for the first win they are zero and four and they play the 49ers next the Jets play the Colts next week and then they get a bye week well Pat and I will be back with some further thoughts but right now let's go down to Bob Neal thank you Gary and joining us in just a couple of minutes will be Browning Nagel who had an outstanding night for the New York Jets tonight and the Donut Bowl trophy has to go to the New England Patriots. They are the only winless team remaining in the NFL after some great come-from-behind victories. And right after this, we'll be going back up to Gary and Pat as they wrap up the game. And then moments later, back with the stadium show post-game report.